Welcome to the wonderful world of wine. We are your hosts, Mark Lindsay and Kim Simone, exploring all things wine with you. You can find us on Facebook at The Wonderful World of Wine. Hello again, everybody. Hi, Kim. How are you? I'm great, Mark. How are you? Everything is fine. I'm just excited to talk more wine with our listeners today. Uh, Every week, Kim and I get together and discuss articles we find searching uh, the web and all things wine related and what we think are interesting. We're always thinking about wine. So (laughs) yeah. And we're trying to get our our listeners on the same wavelength as us here, Kim, so we can put the wine in their minds too. And with some questions or topics so they can discuss yeah. and give us questions along the way. And the first article we have, again, is from our buddies at Wine Enthusiasts. We're still looking for our free subscriptions to the magazine. <laughs> what does funky mean in wine? And this is a term, Kim, I think there could be many meanings or translations to it. So the first thing I wanted to start with was what is your interpretation before we talk about the wine enthusiast interpretation and then give my take on it and see if we're on the same, what we think funky is or how we use mm-hmm. it. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you wanted to start it with our own opinions on this flavor profile, I guess you could call it, because I have a slightly different definition than what this article talks about. So when I talk about wines that are a little bit funky, they do sometimes have that little bit of like a gaminess and animal-y kind of smell to them, whether it be like horses or stables or a hay straw kind of a smell. But I associate the word funky sometimes with wines that are more savory versus more fruity. And I find in a lot of wines, especially from Italy, that a lot of them are kind of pulled back from the primary fruit flavors. Like you don't necessarily take a sip or stick your nose in a glass of Italian wine and be like, oh, yeah, that smells like raspberries and blackberries and Bing cherries and blah, 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 blah. Like some of those fruits can be there. But I feel like that the flavors and aromas are more on like the herbal, savory, like there's just something about them that is full of flavor and full of aroma, but not necessarily fruitiness. And I find that funkiness plays a part in that type of wine for me. So I don't just feel like funky is that animal-y smell. I also feel like funky can be mushroomy or it can be earthy or it can be all of these other aromas and flavors that we can find in wine that aren't necessarily primary fruit aromas and flavors. And what about yourself? Yeah, so we're on the same page. To me, it's all about the aroma. We open a bottle, we typically know what it should smell like, if it's going to be fruity or earthy or oaky. And if you get something maybe you're not used to or you've never experienced before, then you think it's a little off or a little funky in your wine world. And that's how you use it. You you gave some good descriptors as far as gamey, earthy, wet, Italy, a lot of Italian wines. So it's it's all about uh, the aroma and it's not usually what you're used to and it can be a little off. And, and when you say savory, Kim, are you, are you putting everything but oak and fruit in savory category as far as aromas? Mm, no, not really, because I don't put floral necessarily in savory, but sometimes there's a crossover between fruity and floral or spicy. You know, immediately I think of like Gewürztraminer where I might call it roses, but somebody else might call it lychee fruit. There's so much, I think, variability in how you interpret what you're smelling and tasting, but I don't usually have much of a a fruitiness that I associate with funky. But it's interesting that I don't necessarily think of it as a faulty thing. But for you, it seems like funky indicates that there could be something wrong with the wine. So if it's a wine that you have had before and you open it and it doesn't smell or taste the way that you expect it to, you're calling that funky as well. Yeah, not a, not in a bad way. I think a lot of people- Not in like a faulty think, way? No, I, I guess that was my question is, is and, for you, I is think funky a, faulty? 
No, no. I think a lot of consumers think that because it's something they're not used to. Oh, so gotcha. they think okay. It's so bad, not used to not like, hey, I have a house wine and my fourth bottle of it from this case that I opened up doesn't smell or taste the way that the first three bottles tasted like. You're not talking about that. No, you're talking no, about I wouldn't a brand say, new wine for somebody. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Right. I wouldn't say funky. I would say the bottle's off compared to what it. All right. Typically would be, but I think people get turned off on a wine. If that's the way the wine is supposed to be, but they think it's not, so they think it's funky, yeah, and, and it's different to them, so it turns them off. And that was one of the things the article asked: Is funky a good or a bad descriptor, and is it a good or bad thing for wine? If we keep using that term, we're telling someone think it's funky to me. Is how does someone interpret that? Do they interpret it as a good thing? Like, yeah, I want to try it because Kim said it's funky. I want to try it because she found something unusual about it. Or do you think it's a bad thing that I'll never try because Kim thinks it's got an issue? The I personally like the word funky. <laughs> Maybe that's because I grew up in the 80s and, and funky is a positive term if you're an 80s kid. But I don't see it as a pejorative necessarily. I think it's just a different way of describing what might be in your glass. Yeah. And it, 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 overall, it's like... A, it, an unfamiliar aromatic that you're probably not used to. And there's so many different styles of wine in, in the wine world that it might not fall into your profile of something that you like. So if you don't like that savoriness or that earthiness, or like you said, the gaminess, and Italy is a great example that you used. And I think I mentioned in the past a few times about this, I can't open anything really Italian in my house because my wife thinks it all smells like a horse or bad. Uh, well, and there we go. Barnyard. There's our funky. Right. And that's to her, that's what it is. And I yeah. can't, but I like it. So my funk is not in her bag. So, And I think that it is a aroma or flavor profile that some people like it and some people really don't like it. And I think it's one of the few things that they're sort of cut and dried lines for this. I think that there are like your wife, some people who are like, nope, that is a that is a hard nope for me. I don't like that in yeah. my wine. Whereas other people are like, oh, yeah, you know, I can I can do that. I have a friend also who really likes that, that gaminess, that band 80. It, it's what I call Barbie doll head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Again, back to the 80s kid thing. You know, it's it's almost like a rubber band, fresh plastic out of the package that I think is also associated with this word funky. And it ties in with Britannomyces, which is brought up in this article. Uh, it's another microorganism that can play a part in fermentation and in wine aging that can impart some of these funky flavors. And some people hate it and some people search out wines with that profile. So yeah, it's one of those things that maybe you love it or maybe you hate it. Yeah. And in bringing up that, many people think Brett is a, a fault in the wine world that's bad and many people love it. So they're, they're saying that that gives you a little bit of maybe smoky bacon, which is savory or gaminess mm -hmm. or that leather. Yeah. Some leather leather is always a big one. <laughs> that sort yeah. of aroma of leather. I get that a lot with like French Rhone wines or Southern mm -hmm. French red wines i associate it with not only so yes with like um smoky bacon or whatever but with, i get it right. with um like black pepper too like that's another one of those yeah. that and that's why i said Sp spicy at the beginning because i feel like black pepper yeah. ties in with these same sort of savory aromas and flavors in my mind right now have you asked me when i was saying i was thinking you were thinking maybe i was putting it as a bad thing yeah have you ever used the term in a bad way I think when I use the word funky as a negative, I mean more that maybe there's a fault with the wine, right. that there is something wrong with it. I try and not to It's kind to of use... a nice way of saying that you think it's wrong. Yeah, <laughs> it was a little more diplomatic you know? way of saying, oh, something wrong with yeah. this wine. <laughs> and that's that's how I use it a lot. How you use I the use word funky? I use that a lot. If someone's sampling me a wine, I'll say, hmm, yeah, I'll say... It's a funky. little funky to me. Is that the way it's supposed to taste? In other words, I think that it's off or bad. You yeah. tell me, is that the way it's supposed to taste? So you're um, you're that's... you're doing it as courtesy. <laughs> yeah, instead of saying it's a bad, something's off, or I think your wine is bad, I'll say it's I'm getting a little funkiness on this wine. Mm -hmm. Is it normal? Is that the normal thing? So I mean I do use it in a bad way, but most of the time Well, because sometimes there are some of those wines that they have that funk, but they're meant to be there. 
So it's Best not a flaw is, right. or maybe it, maybe it is technically a flaw, but it was the intent of the winemaker. And so in that regard, it's not a flaw. It's what they wanted. Would you associate or can you think of anything off the top of your head where a, a funky wine, a terroir, it's always going to be the terroir is making it funky. So in other words, I was saying Southern French Rhone wines. I always consider yeah. those going to be, they're going to be funky compared to what I'm usually used to. Any stick out to you? Um, for me, some of the lesser known appellations within Chianti tend to give me a little bit of funk too. Like Chianti Coli Senesi sometimes has some of that funk. Yeah, and I'll often get it Italians with- today. Yeah, I'm all I'm all about the Italian, I guess. Yeah, so yeah, you're picking on sometimes. Not mm, sometimes. I ah. I hesitate to say Brunello because there's a lot of really good, smooth, clean Brunello out there. But then I feel like there's also some pretty funky Brunello out there. There's there's times where you open a bottle, and I'm sure our listeners has experienced this, where you open it up and the funky. But I'm gonna I'm gonna stick it out and see what happens. And over time, it opens up mm-hmm. and it kind of dissipates and it, it gets to the, the fruits or the oak or the spice. I think wine enthusiasts also brought up a great point in the article talking about natural wines. That a lot of people think yeah. natural wines are just funky, yeah. and that's the style. Because honestly, it's I think they shame. are. <laughs> yeah. Now, why would you describe them? And that is it's funky because of the way they're made or the taste. The taste, but also the intent. Like they're intended to have a little bit of that funk to them. Because they just believe they're going to let nature take its course and it's going to give them whatever it gives them. Yeah. A lot of people think that's a great thing. And they might think something that's mass produced is funky compared to Mm -hmm. something that's not manipulated. So Yeah, it's just a different philosophy. Yeah. So that shows, I guess that all comes back to the whole point of the articles. It means funky means many different things in the wine world. So if you hear it, don't be afraid or take it as a curious thing to investigate and sample and explore it and see what you think. Mm -hmm. You're listening to The Wonderful World of Wine. We are your hosts, Mark and Kim. You can find more information about Mark at his website, franklinliquors.com, and more information about myself at commonwealthwineschool.com. And as always, you can find us on Facebook at The Wonderful World of Wine and our past episodes on SoundCloud and iTunes. Welcome back to The Wonderful World of Wine. We've just been talking about funky wine. And now we are going to talk about, uh, it was an article in, it's actually an opinion piece, a little uh, tongue in cheek in The New Yorker about what to do when you are really running late for a dinner party and you need to buy a bottle of wine. So I started to read this, Mark, and then I'm like, what is going on here? And then I'm like, ah, the New Yorker. <laughs> See, I'm not, so it was that's a little the first funny. time I asked you. I'm not familiar with the funny. New Yorker. So is, is it like a tongue in cheek type of publication? Oh, yeah. This is, yeah. this is absolutely what this is supposed to be. It's not supposed to be, uh, please take this advice the next time you're in your local wine shop and you are running late to a party. <laughs> yeah. And they, I and they started out when you're running late, how to buy it in a supermarket or a grocery store, they said. So I'm like, oh, I already don't like this article. So it's <laughs> telling you when you, you just shop just at the grocery store. So right away, it didn't start good to me. But it, it was kind of joking around about if you're in a hurry and uh, it gave some tips. So w- what would you like to start with, Kim, uh, as far as what they were saying for tips? It did stand out to me as one of my kind of rules to live by is price point. So it was a little bit farther down in the piece, but uh, they, (laughs) I think they said something like between 12 and 24, but the sweet spot is like $18 and 23 cents. Yeah. It was a weird, yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. That, you know, all right. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good with that price point. It was within your range. They said 17 to 20 only consider they said. So I was a little aware. Be aware of the price, they said, but only consider seventeen to twenty dollar range. But eighteen dollars seventy three cents is the best price. So <laughs> I don't think anybody prices like that. But no, if you could find one like that, I think you deserve a prize because uh, you won't find anything like that. And they they did make a comment saying cheaper than seventeen dollars is swill. 
We, I don't think we ever used that term on the show, Kim, swill. I we, have we, never used the word swill. I didn't think that you would ever allow me to use yeah. such a such a term. No, I mean, we say inexpensive instead of cheap, but never swill. I've, I've heard some <laughs> other you know, like derogatory things made about wine, but I'm not really swill. Uh, I like uh, sell it or... a, co- uh, a colleague of mine likes to use cheap and cheerful. <laughs> As That's her description tip. for uh, maybe wines in that category. So they said avoid cheaper than 17 and more than $20 is too nice to drink. I guess if you're in a hurry for a last minute gift, you're picking up over 20 might be, you know, overdoing it too. And for people so, but there was interesting comments about beware of price. And what, what do you consider like, I mean, this happened to us. You, you yeah, and I'm probably I'm I'm hoping you're the same as me. You have to go someplace. You have to bring a bottle of wine. Do you even go shop quick for a kid, or you just pick something out of your wine cellar? Uh, it depends, and and I like to stick with the know your audience. So I think a lot of it does depend on yeah, well, right. where am I going? Who's going to be drinking this? Will they appreciate X bottle, or should I just go out and get Y bottle? But I have no problem with like running out to somewhere right before I head over to somebody's house and picking up a bottle because I know that there is usually enough variety in whatever store I'm going to go to that there will be something that I will be happy picking. Yeah, you've got a whole store at your disposal. Consider the art. They didn't even bring up any of that as a point of like, what's the occasion? And they yeah. didn't mention what audience you pick it up for. What's the occasion? Where you going? Is it a cookout? Is it a dinner? Is it a, well, that's because you know, it's not a serious party? article. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, still, you know, we're always looking at these little things. But uh, so that was, you know, price was one. They also said where it's from. Don't uh, even consider where it's from. Right. It really, it's just uh, kind of if it says France or California, it doesn't matter. Basically, get whatever is closer to you, the door when you go in so you can get out <laughs> faster, which is not good wide advice. Right. So and, and don't you don't buy kit? anything that's that is in a glass case. They gave that advice yeah. as well. If it's which, locked up, honestly, you know, if you're not going to be spending more than 25 or so dollars, they're not locking up those wines. So you're probably right. pretty safe with that advice. Unless it's baby formula, they lock it all oh, up. Yeah, or like but Sudafed yeah. or something. So that yeah, it gets to the price. You're not going to find anything locked up that's in the seventeen to twenty dollar range. But uh, again, don't they just said uh, uh, wine is wine, and just get whatever. Don't worry about where it's from. And uh, as you, if you're a listener of the show, you know that's not advice we give too often. <laughs> and uh, next, they were talking about the label. And less on the label means it's better. This, this is where comment. I knew that it was a silly article <laughs> because it was, yeah, it was very. Uh, they were kind of insinuating that less just very silly being told to you of, you know, big graph, big, uh, not graphics, big uh, lettering is good. Big font. Yes. Anything with the chateau on it is stuffy which goes all against the trends. We tell you that people think that if they see a chateau or a house on a label, it's it sells and according to them, stay away from those. Yes, they say uh, be on the lookout for giraffes with party hats and bowls of soup. So yes, <laughs> that tipped me yeah. off that this was a, a humorous article. I don't think it, I've ever a seen a bowl of, time, of soup on a label. No, frankly. you think they're making fun of like the yellow tail or the barefoot? Oh, like absolutely. The, yeah. And I'm surprised they wouldn't just say it. Be aware of the foot or, you know, the feet or you go something. Yeah, I, to, probably you know. because they had too much to choose from. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There are so, so many things that you could uh, be picky about. They also mentioned skip the tasting profile. They might say something on the label, what it tastes like. You don't waste your time. And to me, that's actually not bad advice because what it says is not typically what you might get. If they say it's a floral and you're going to taste raspberry or strawberry, that doesn't mean you will taste that. And I think that was actually, you know, they were trying to be funny about it, but it's actually true, I, I believe. Mm-hmm. And it may and not be people... your profile or the kind of thing that you yeah, like. Right. Yeah. And if you're in a hurry, are you even picking up and people are really looking at the labels or are they looking at the shelf talkers? They're just picking up something and you're in a hurry, you know? Yeah. I think if people are in a hurry, they're going to go with something they're familiar with, you know, something tried and true. They also said, make sure when you get to where you're going, the occasion you picked up the wine, that you make an effort to say you took you some time and you brought the wine. 
which, you know, it's a, it's a good little tip, right? You know, I, Hey, I, brought hey, the I, wine. I had to stop and get wine. I went all the things I went through to get this wine and <laughs> here it is. So they're saying, you know, all these ways to kind of cheap out and avoid picking a good wine, but then don't forget to take the credit that you did all this to, <sighs> to get a quick bottle of wine. So do you think overall Kim, good article for the wine world or, you know, is it good that we have a little humor every once in a while for wine or, or is it bad because it's making people think or not to take wine as serious or what'd you think? I mean, we I, mean I, I have no problem with people taking wine a little bit less seriously. I th- just hope that people don't read this and take it as actual wine advice. Yeah, everybody's in a hurry. And, and I personally, and you, you can tell me your situation on this, Kim, but I can tell when someone comes into my store and they're looking all around really quick. They're in a hurry. You can tell they just want to get something and get out. Yeah. And of course, I ask everybody if they need help, but they're saying, you know, I just want to pick up a bottle of wine. And the first thing I always think of, what's my go-to? What is my favorite wine that's popular that I've always sold and no one's ever told me? It's Swill. You know, it's like, this is what I recommend. This is the red in my mind all the time. This is the white in my mind all the time. You're in a hurry. Take my advice. Go with it. Have you ever been in that situation? Yeah, it's great to have those wines in your back pocket. It really is. What about in in the restaurant? Do you think people that way, they're pressured really quick to pick a bottle in the restaurant? I think it's less so in the restaurant because the timing of your schedule is much more based along when the food will come out and less on you know, I, how quick I need to pick a bottle of wine. Right. So, so no, I think it's a little bit, uh, it's a little different in the, in the restaurant sphere. Have you ever rushed to (laughs) to pick out a bottle and just got something horrible and regret it that you picked out Hmm. too fast? I probably have, but nothing comes to mind right now. Probably in my, in my earlier days. I don't really have the issue shopping because I don't really shop. Yeah. uh, But I have the issue when I, I feel like something for wine. I'm in my house. I'll go to my wine rack and I'm looking, I'm looking. I'm like, "Mm, Mm. I don't want to open that one tonight. So I'm kind of shopping and and trying to select something. Then they'll say, oh, why why did I pick that? I didn't know I was having this for food or something, you know. (laughs) But uh, so I can see people stressing out, bringing something. And Oh, absolutely. And you want to, I mean, you want to bring something good. You want to make a nice impression. You know, wine is one of those things that makes people feel nervous because they want to demonstrate that they know stuff and that they're not completely clueless about this topic that a lot of people feel like they have very strong opinions on. Right. So I think w- it totally makes sense that people are a little uh, apprehensive sometimes about what wine they're bringing to an event or somebody's house or, or whatever. So what would be your number one serious tip? The best advice, you're in a hurry, you have to go in a store, pick out a bottle. Number one best tip for, from Kim to our listeners. Mm. Talk to the people in the store. That would be my recommendation, would be to get the professional advice that people are there to give you. That is why there are wine experts who work in stores. If you describe where you're going, maybe who the host is, you know, give them a little bit of an idea of what you want to spend, maybe what you like to drink, because chances are you're going to be having a glass of it yourself. Uh, I feel like that just those little bits of information can go a long way. And they will give you something that isn't going to look cheap, they'll give you something that looks like you made an effort. So that is my number one recommendation is take advantage of the wine experts who are around you because they know their inventory. And if you tell them, oh, I can only spend X amount of dollars, they will find you something really good at that price point. See, I knew I liked you, Kim. Perfect (laughs) advice. Perfect. We're on the same page. I think that is absolutely the best advice. And I'm not even handing you any cash right now. I think that was just that. Like we're here. Take advantage of our knowledge, please. Yeah, that's (laughs) excellent advice. Just don't rush. Ask for help. Don't just buy the first thing. And, you know, I always say, be careful what you buy because people are going to say, oh, geez, they, you can find Fine prices. We always say this when we talk about gifts. Don't get something that's really cheap or really huge and because they're going to know that you probably didn't spend much time or think about it if you care or don't care, but they're going to know. So, And that's kind of the downside advice. of picking like a label that everybody knows. And there are always those trendy wines. And I feel like especially in the summertime, every summer we have like one or two trendy rosés that are on the shelf and that you see in like every single store and every grocery store. And I kind of feel like, well, if you pick up that trendy bottle, people are going to know that it's the trendy bottle. (laughs) 
Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. So sometimes picking up something that is a little bit less familiar, but still tastes really good can go a long way into making people maybe not just, you know, think that you know something about wine, but demonstrate that you're a good one for picking out a, a good bottle. And you'll enjoy it a lot more when they open it when you get there too. Mm -hmm. It's part of the adventure. So little wine buying tips from the New Yorker. And we, we mixed in ours and listen to Kim. Thank you for joining us today on The Wonderful World of Wine. We've been your hosts, Mark Lindsay and Kim Simone, exploring all things wine with you. For more information about Kim, you can find her on her website, commonwealthwineschool.com. For more information about myself, you can go to franklinlickers.com. Our past episodes are on SoundCloud and iTunes and where most podcasts you can find us. Uh, we're on Twitter at Wine Education. We're also on Instagram at The Wonderful World of Wine. Any questions or comments, please find us on Facebook at The Wonderful World of Wine. Cheers. Bye, bye, bye.